hi everyone welcome back again to my youtube channel today so in today's video we are going to be making this beautiful peplum blouse this is a very simple peplum so i want to use the opportunity to share with you guys how to go about the 1440 degrees flare so if this is something you're interested in i'll say keep on watching and if you're still yet to subscribe to the channel hit on the subscribe button and let's get started So guys to make this blouse i have only two yards of fabric here this is the fabric i'm going to be using this is my pattern paper so if you want to make this for yourself i would advise that you have about three yards because i am only a size six and two yards might not be enough for you so now the first thing i'm going to do is to fold my pattern paper into four because this is what you need to do every time that you're about to cut out a flare and you're going to check out the folded edge not this part this folded edge here so this is the area where you will start taking your measurements from so in my last video i told you guys that when you want to cut out a 360 degrees flare you are going to divide your waist measurement by four my waist measurement is 24 and 24 divided by four in this case is six inches so if i'm cutting out a 360 degrees flare my radius will be six inches now for 720 i will divide my waist measurement by eight and that will give me if you punch your calculator three inches so 24 divided by 8 is 3 inches so 3 will be my radius for 720 degrees flare now for 144 degrees flare you are going to divide your waist measurement by 16 so that's what i'm doing here so if i divide 24 by 16 it's going to give me 1.5 so 1.5 is going to be the radius i'm going to be using for my flare now for a 360 degrees flare i'll be cutting out only one piece for 720 degrees you will cut out two pieces and now for a 144 degrees flare you will need to cut out four pieces that's four tiny flares now for the sake of emphasis i'm going to go back and explain again so if you are cutting a 144 degrees flare for me my waist is 24 inches so you're going to divide your waist by 16 okay divide your waist by 16 don't bother yourself about where that 16 is coming from it's kind of like a constant so my waist measurement divided by 16 is 1.5 so i'm going to be using this 1.5 as the radius for my flare remember that i've told you guys that when you want to fold your fabric make sure you are folding it into four even though you are cutting on the actual fabric i am going to be taking your measurement from this folded edge here so now i'm going to be using 1.5 inches which was the radius we got just now when we made our calculations now instead of using this 1.5 exactly i'm going to be adding an extra half inch which is going to serve as the allowance to join the pieces together and also serve as zipper allowance for the back so now i have two inches right i'm going to be using that two inches point to make a rough curve and i'll be making a point here at the two inches point here like this so i'll measure from the center to this new point that i just made so whatever i have from the center to the new point i had about one and a quarter inch i'm going to use it to create a curve all the way across so i'm going to be doing this making sure that my tape is on the points here and i'm going to continue to use it to make a round curve all the way to the other end of the paper so just look at what i'm doing now and try as much as possible to do the same thing so guys once you're done marking the radius you're going to use your tape to be sure that you have the exact same two inches on this point so when you're sure it's the same thing then you can go ahead and measure the length of your flare now i don't i don't want this flare to be too long so i want it to be about seven inches by the time i'm done sewing everything so from the first line above i'm going to measure down to seven inches from this line here so i'm going to extend my tape and measure again seven inches i'm going to continue placing the tape on the first line i have and i will just continue to mark the seven inches point until i get to the other end of the paper as well so once you're done go ahead and cut along the pencil line just like i'm doing like this so guys this is what our flare looks like this is just one of it i'm going to go ahead and cut out four pieces on my fabric okay we're going to be joining all the four pieces together to give us the full 144 degrees 1440 degrees flare actually so i'm going to actually need to also fold my fabric into four 
just like i did when i was drafting out on the paper so just go ahead and fold your fabric into four then place your pattern paper and go ahead and pin it down just like i'm doing like this just place it on the folded edge as well just like you did when you were drafting out on the pattern paper so now i'm going to go ahead and cut it out i'll be cutting half inch away from the pattern paper on both the top and the bottom this is because uh, we need these allowances to be able to join the top to the bodies and to join the ends as well so i went ahead to cut out four pieces like i said i was going to do so for this particular one i have one two three and four okay so these are all the pieces if you open up one of the flare this is what it looks like okay by the time we cut and join all the pieces together it will give me my full waist which is 24 inches now for the lining pieces i didn't have any fabric i didn't have any more lining pieces in my house anymore so i just decided to use this fabric as my lining i also had to cut out four pieces as well because it has to be the same thing on the front and back so if you have your normal black lining please go ahead and use it don't mind the fact that i'm using another fabric fabric as a lining here because the fabric i had was not going to be enough for everything now i have my interfacing the interfacing i have here is hasty i'm going to go ahead and iron into the back of all my pieces so guys i've ironed the interfacing to the actual fabric to the wrong side of the actual fabric i didn't have enough interfacing as well as at the time i was filming this tutorial guys this tutorial was very challenging so i didn't have enough to place on the lining pieces normally i will also iron interfacing to the lining but i didn't for this particular one and you can see that the end result was not so full as much as i would have loved it to be because if we had a lot of interfacing on it it gives it a lot more strength so now i'm going ahead to just cut on each of the flare fold it into two and just cut out one part to separate it to open it up basically so once you're through you're going to go ahead and start joining all the three all the four flares together so just put them right sides facing each other you can go ahead and pin it down if you want to but this is something that you can actually do with your free hand even though you don't pin it down but i'm just pinning it down for the purpose of this tutorial so just go ahead and pin it together and once you're done joining the first two you're going to add the next part and just continue with the same process like that so just go ahead and also pin it down and don't forget to also add the fourth part so you're just going to go ahead and join all the pieces together and you will still repeat the same process for your lining pieces as well so guys i have joined them together and this is what it looks like so you can see i joined it here and for the lining pieces as well i joined it here which is a little bit hard to see now um when you're done joining it the next thing you want to go ahead and do is to arrange your fabric right sides facing each other so i'm placing the lining on the ground and i'm going to be placing my actual fabric on it right sides facing each other like this if you have a hemming gum i would advise that you bring in your hemming gum because i'm going to head over to the sewing machine and i'm going to start stitching it down so you see i placed the right sides of the two flares together right sides facing each other and i'm just pinning my hemming gum on it as well so i'm going to be stitching all three pieces together on the sewing machine just like i'm pinning it now now in the last tutorial where i made a 720 degrees flare a lot of people were asking about crinoline and how they can add a crinoline to it which i shared with you guys so for this particular one i didn't want to add a crinoline because the flare was already going to be very full and i'm not someone who likes a very full flare so i decided not to add a crinoline to this one but if you like to add a crinoline definitely you should see the 720 degrees flare video and how to go about adding a crinoline so guys i am done stitching it down around the edges you can see what it looks like here okay so now sometimes when you're done stitching down your flare you might notice that one side is longer than the other it happens it actually happens so all you have to do is to just cut off the excess so once you're done this is what i have here now i'm going to go ahead and just stitch down this edge here and do the same thing for the other side as well then i will turn everything over to the right side and iron it out so guys now for the upper bodies i have my fabric first folded into two and then folded again into four but i left about one and a half inch away from this edge to this edge to serve as zipper allowance for the back because i'm cutting the front and the back together
now for the length from this place here to this place i have about 16 inches but my actual shoulder to waist measurement is 15 so the extra one inch is going to be serving as stitching allowance now from the center of the folded edge not from the end of my fabric i came in by two and a half inches for the neck width and then i'm coming down by four and a half inches for the neck depth i'm going to be connecting the points with my cuff to get a round neckline this is the front neckline okay now from the front here i'm going to go in by half of my shoulder measurement i made a mark here and then i'm going to come down by one inch for my shoulder slope and i'm just going to be connecting it into the top of my neckline then from the shoulder slope i'm going to come down by seven inches which is the measurement of my armhole depth got in by dividing my bust measurement by six and adding 1.5 to what i get then i just got the midpoint in between these two places here i'm just using my free hand to draw a line to connect them now from the middle i came in by half of an inch and then on this line here i am going to mark my bust measurement divided by four i made a mark here okay now i'm going to be connecting my armhole so i'll be connecting the top of the shoulder slope the midpoint and then all the way to the bust measurement that i just did so this will give you a nice armhole curve so now for my shoulder i am going to measure down to my bust point i just drew a line across so that i'll also be able to take my round bust measurement divided by four i just marked it here now coming down to the waistline i'll divide my waist measurement by four add an extra one inch for my dart which i just did and then i'm going to be using my curve to connect all the last points now this is just a half scale basic board this, this is something i do a lot on my channel so now i'm going to be adding an extra about one and a half inch from the side line that i just got this is for me to join the sides together this is my stitching allowance okay so now we already cut out the front but we need to cut out the neckline for the back so from the center back i'm coming down by one and a half inch and i'm just going to from the neckline draw to meet the depth of the neckline for the back the neckline is going to have a high back neckline okay so i'm going to go ahead and cut out the neckline for the back first okay then i'll just raise up the front and cut out the neckline for the front don't make the mistake of cutting the front and back together especially if you don't want the neckline to be the same and then i will just continue to go ahead and cut every other part out so guys this is the front and back pieces i've separated them now front and back i'm going to go ahead and cut out my lining pieces i have a little bit of black lining so i'm going to be using it to cut out the lining pieces for the upper part of the front and back so guys i've cut out the lining pieces i'm just going to turn the front bodies to the front right sides facing me and i'm just going to place the lining so i'll go ahead and stitch around the neckline turn it over to the wrong side and make a top stitch and stitch the side so the neckline and the side for the front now for the two back pieces i'm also going to go ahead and arrange them in place right sides facing each other so i'll go ahead and stitch the neckline the center back and the side again neckline center back and side i'll turn everything over to the right side and iron it out so guys after i was done this is what the front is looking like and i've also done the same thing for the two back pieces so i'm going to place everything together now remember this is the center back so i'm going to be starting my measurement from the front piece i'm taking half of my nipple to nipple measurement i marked it here and i'm just going to make a notch to know where i'll be stitching down my darts later now this is the front this is where my darts will be stitched down and also i have done it for the back as well so now i'm going to go ahead and join my pieces on the shoulders there are several ways you can go about it so i'm just going to pick the actual fabrics here today and then pick the lining on one side and i'm just going to go ahead and pin everything down and stitch it down so i'm going to go ahead and stitch around the areas i made my pins and do the same thing for the other side then i'll go ahead and stitch down all my dart areas so guys i am done stitching down the shoulder areas as you can see and i've also gone ahead to stitch down my dart here on the front and also at the back so i've gone ahead to cut out my sleeves 
i have a whole video on the channel where i shared how to go about drafting out your sleeve both for long sleeve and short sleeves so i'm going to be linking it down in the description box okay so now i'm going to attach my sleeve to the armhole area of my bodies i'm just going ahead to pin it around the, the armhole just like you see me doing like this just go ahead and pin your sleeve around the armhole and i'm going to head over and stitch it down and do the same thing for the other side as well so after i was done this is what my two sleeves look like i'm now turning everything over to the wrong side and from the sleeve i'm going to go ahead and pin everything down all the way to the end of my bodies which is around the waist i'm going to do the same thing for the other side as well just go ahead and pin everything down nice and clean and i'm going to head over to the sewing machine to join these sides together i'll be using my body measurement when i'm making this stitch so after i was done making my stitch this is what it looks like right now so you can see what it looks like i've joined it down on the side so now finally we are going to be adding our peplum so i first of all try out the peplum around the waist area and realize that my peplum is a little bit too long so what i'm going to do is when i'm stitching this down i'm going to be making tiny pleats on the peplum so that it will fit exactly into my waist so i'm just going ahead to pin the peplum around the waist area i'll pin the both ends actually it's best to pin the both ends since we are going to be making pleats in between so i just made a little pleat here and pin it down and then of course i'll be pinning the other end as well and i will head over and stitch it down after i was done stitching it down this is what it looks like you can see the only thing that is left is for us to fix the zipper to the back so make sure that everything you're doing is nice and clean this is what it looks like after i was done fixing my own peplum to the blouse so this is how far we've gone i'm going to head over now and i'm going to be fixing my zipper to the back of this blouse so i'll start from the end all the way to the top and cut off the excess zipper i'll be having at the top so guys after i was done fixing my zipper this is what it looks like so yeah this is basically all for the making of this blouse thank you so much for watching this tutorial i hope that you actually find it helpful let me know what you think about this in the comment section and if you're still yet to subscribe please hit on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell i will see you in my next one